Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today with another random episode challenge video. If this is your first time coming across this series, it's basically a total mess at this point. The original idea transforms with every new video, but the core concept is that we're battling a strong trainer with a team made up of the first six Pokemon seen in a random episode of the anime. At this point though, we have a couple of disqualifiers for Pokemon. All of the ever-present Pokemon like Ash's Pikachu, Misty's Togepi, Dawn's Piplup, and Team Rocket's Meowth and Wobbuffet are off-limits. If you want to see me using them, then check out the other episodes. I asked the viewers and basically everyone agreed that they should be ruled out so that we get more diverse teams for each new video. A new rule for this video is that we're done with duplicates. This was first brought up when I used a full team of Spearow against Gary, but it came up again in the last video. People weren't too happy with me using two Arcanine and it seems going forward that everyone wants six unique Pokemon to make up my team. This will be the last random episode challenge video for a little while, so here's hoping it's a good one. The random number generated for today's episode was 504, which corresponds with the 38th episode of the Diamond and Pearl series, One Big Hapini Family. Now, if you've watched this series before, then you know that the Japanese episode titles are almost always superior, and in this case, we, <laughs> we get Explosive Birth Cycling Road, which like, yeah, it's something. That is a title. Let's, uh, let's, let's get into it. The episode begins with Ash, Brock, and Dawn cycling down the cycling road on their way to Heart Home City. Well, there's half of the Japanese title explained. The three chat about Dawn's egg fried bike, but when dark clouds begin to take shape in the sky, our heroes decide to make a detour to find the closest Pokemon Center. Another reason for locating their nearest nurse Joy clone is that the egg that Brock won a few episodes prior has begun to glow. When they arrive at the Pokemon Center, it looks more like the setting for a horror movie than it does a hospital for monsters that fit right in your pocket. They find a Chansey roaming around with a mop and bucket, and as Pikachu and Piplup are off limits, she'll be our first team member. Although we don't use any items in this series, including held items, so the cleaning equipment will have to go. The egg Pokemon points them in the direction of Nurse Joy, who's having something of an existential crisis. Just like the fallen brown leaves of autumn! <laughs> My Pokemon Center has been abandoned and forgotten by the rest of the world! Thanks to the new cycling road, her Pokemon Center is no longer a necessary stop for trainers. Being alone with her thoughts in isolation has led Joy to stop looking after the building she runs. While the skies open up and the rain starts pouring, we see Krogunk thinking about eating some hallucinogenic mushrooms. Luckily, he decides not to eat them because he'll be the second member of our team, and I can't imagine they're particularly beneficial for a Pokemon preparing to battle. Anyway, the entire group heads back to the center with the egg close to hatching, and Brock sends Dawn and Ash to get towels and hot water. Dawn puts a lot of effort into her search for towels, closely examining every corner of every room in the building. Huh? Doesn't look like there are any towels in here. It's probably a good thing that she didn't look too closely, because that room housed Team Rocket, and even though Meowth and Wobbuffet are both chowing down on bread, it's only James's Mime Jr. that we're interested in. You rarely see Jesse and James without their main two partners, but the baby Pokemon definitely doesn't count as an ever-present, so that makes three. After burning himself on a hot kettle, Ash returns to Brock with the requested hot water, and presumably somebody gave Dawn towels because she certainly didn't find them. With everything in place, the egg hatches in what was apparently an explosive birth, and we have our fourth team member in the shape of Happy Knee. Everyone is shocked and overjoyed at the occasion. Now, I feel like people probably don't want me doubling up on Pokemon from the same evolution line, but that's gonna have to happen here. I'm sure we'll be adding a new rule for the next episode, though. The titles for this series are getting gradually less and less true. Moving on, Team Rocket are watching the explosive birth from just outside the room, and they hatch a plan to steal the baby Pokemon right from under Brock's nose. We then get to see a flashback into Jessie's past, where she was training to be a Chansey? Okay, I'm, I'm not going to question it. What follows is a fantasy sequence with just the worst kind of frame for this series. There's like 15 Pokemon here, and we only need two more for our team. Now, the first two that caught my eye were Whiskash and Kangaskhan, but the odds of finding the latter in Pokemon Platinum come completely down to random chance. She only appears in the Great Marsh after you have the National Dex, but it only happens randomly by day. If Kangaskhan isn't there, then you can come back tomorrow and maybe she will be, but honestly, I don't know how it works, and I didn't want to waste like two weeks trying to find one. 
So instead I moved on and picked Poliwag. I just go left to right with these ones and the water type was the next Pokemon that I saw. So that's our team set. We'll be using Chansey, Krogunk, Mime Jr, Hapini, Whiskash and Poliwag. It's a questionable lineup, but we'll try our best. Okay, back to the episode. We may as well finish this thing. Our three protagonists work together to find a round white stone to go into Hapini's pouch, but before Brock can give it to her, she's kidnapped by Team Rocket. As they try to make a balloon-based escape, the baby Pokemon rips off part of Meowth's inflated head, sending the entire group crashing to the ground. Do you ever wonder how Team Rocket fund their exploits? Because I just googled it and small hot air balloons cost $22,000 and they go through like 40 a year. Was James rich? I feel like that was a thing, but unless he stole millions of Poké Dollars from his family, I'm still not sure this makes any sense. Anyway, I'm getting way off track. On their way to the crash site, Nurse Joy has another breakdown, but Brock points out that Team Rocket have injured some wild Pokémon during their flight, and they need her. With a renewed purpose, Joy and Chansey heal up the injured Pokémon and then get back to rescuing Hapini. As it turns out, the episode's titular character doesn't need much help. When she sees Brock in trouble, she just runs roughshod through Team Rocket to get to him. Pikachu blasts them off again, and Brock is finally able to give his new Pokemon the stone that he got for her. That kind gesture is truly appreciated, and as thanks, Hapini gives Brock a concussion? How... sweet. Everyone returns to the Pokemon Center to clean it up, and once they're all done, Ash, Dawn, and Brock get back on the road to Heart Home City. And that's the episode. Let's have a closer look at our team. As a quick reminder, this is who we're working with. Chansey, Krogunk, Mime Jr, Hapini, Whiskash, and Poliwag. With an average base attack below 40 and an average base special attack south of 50, dealing damage could be a real issue. Chansey's ridiculous HP stat carries the team's average base stat total up to 341, right on par with Spritzy and Swirlix. Unfortunately, Cynthia's team of 6 has an average base stat total of 535, tied with Lapras, Noivern, and a handful of others. This is a bit of a mismatch. Okay, let's get into the game and assemble this team. On Route 209 we encounter a Chansey, and after a bit too much effort we manage to catch her to pick up our first team member. We then head straight for Slacy on town and put Chansey in the daycare with a male Rosalia. We get an egg from the daycare man and hatch ourselves a Chansey. God damn it. I forgot to give her the luck incense, didn't I? Okay... After giving Chansey the luck incense and grabbing a new egg, we experience a real explosive birth and finally we have our happy me. That's two down. While searching for a Mr. Mime to breed another baby Pokemon, we come across Zapdos who I'd forgotten was just roaming Sinnoh. We catch it with our Master Ball and after picking up a male and female Mr. Mime, we head back to the daycare in Salacion. This time I actually remembered the required item and when the egg we got hatched, it was in fact the correct Pokemon, Mime Jr. Our next destination is Route 228, where we start fishing in a sandstorm because that's normal behaviour. We hook a bar boat and reel it in for the catch. I feel like that made sense. I live 5 minutes from a lake in a fishing village, but I know next to nothing about it. We then fly back to Pastoria and ride west to the southern part of Route 212. Our intended target was Krogunk, but instead we found Moltres. A discharge from Zapdos actually got the legendary bird into red health and paralysed it before it fled. That works. Anyway, eventually we find our Krogunk and add him to the team with an Ultra Ball. Finally, we revisit Route 228 to search for the final required team member. While surfing in a sandstorm, we get our hands on Poliwag, and isn't it weird that I know more about surfing than fishing? I've surfed once in my life, although I think I hit myself in the face with the board more times than I actually stood up on what was essentially a weapon in my hands. And yet I've never been fishing. Although, based on my experience surfing, I imagine I would be the guy who gets injured in every fishing scene in every comedy ever. Anyway, we caught our final team member and now it's just a matter of grinding. While training up Mime Jr, we crossed paths with Moltres yet again and threw an Ultra Ball, but despite its injuries, it got away. The final thing you really need to see before the battle is our Barboach reaching level 30 and evolving into Whiskash. With our whole team assembled, we just need to level them up, beat the Elite Four, and then we'll be good and ready for our battle with Cynthia. Should be nice and easy. Okay, let's have a look at the team. If this is your first time seeing a random episode challenge video, the concept is for the 6 on 6 battle to be sort of in keeping with an anime matchup, so the battle style is on set and we're not allowed to use items, held or otherwise. We also match levels with our opponent, except for last time where our team was really really good. For this one we've got Hapini at level 74 with Flamethrower, Toxic, Swagger and Light Screen. Chansey's also at level 74 with Hyper Beam, Light Screen, Soft Boiled and Ice Beam. 
Our third level 74 is Krogunk with moves Poison Jab, Swagger, Brick Break and Earthquake. At level 76 we've got Mime Jr with Psychic, Light Screen, Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt. Whiskash is also at level 76 and she's got Surf, Stone Edge, Earthquake and Blizzard. And our final team member is Poliwag whose moveset consists of Surf, Blizzard, Hydro Pump and Psychic. This battle is going to be incredibly difficult but let's give it a shot. Battling Cynthia just always feels epic, so maybe our team will rise to the occasion. Let's find out. The champion of Sinnoh sends out her Spiritomb first, and we lead off with Happy Knee. A ghost that lives in a rock versus a baby that lives with a rock. A true battle for the ages. After putting up a light screen so she can better absorb Spiritomb's dark pulses, Happy gets to work with Swagger. Once the ghost and dark types attack is maxed out, the baby Pokemon uses Toxic to poison her too. Spiritomb gets very lucky with Confusion though and takes Apini down to red health before finally hitting herself. That cuts away almost all of the ghost's remaining HP and although she survives the hit, the poison finishes her off and gives Hapini the first win of the battle. Cynthia sends in Lucario next and he only needs to land one Dragon Pulse to tie the match up. Whiskash comes in on our side and it's a battle of the earthquakes. Lucario's ground shattering attack is only able to knock off about a third of Whiskash's hit points, while her super effective earthquake takes him down into red health. That leads Cynthia to break the rules and use a full restore, but it doesn't make a huge difference in the end. Whiskash is able to knock out Lucario with two more earthquakes, although he does at least manage to get her down to around a quarter health with an aura sphere. Cynthia sends out Roserade next with her quad effective grass typing, so we get out of there as quickly as possible and bring in Chansey. This took about 15 years. Okay, maybe not literally, but it genuinely was almost 10 minutes of repetitive action. That honestly makes it sound so much more exciting than it was. With Light Screen weakening all of Roserade's attack and Soft Boil healing Chansey back up, we were in complete control. Unfortunately, Roserade's first Sludge Bomb poisoned Chansey, which meant we needed to heal with Soft Boiled way more than I was expecting. Eventually, Chansey managed to take Roserade into red health with Ice Beam, but Cynthia hates fun, so she used another full restore. At one point, Roserade got frozen and just immediately thawed for no reason. It was all incredibly frustrating. After many years, Roserade finally went down, presumably from natural causes due to old age. Then Togekiss came out and we were essentially back to square one. I really tried to get to a point where I could get off an Ice Beam, but that moment never really came and after Chansey ran out of PP for Soft Boiled, it was over. She faints without ever getting a hit off. Now that 10 plus straight minutes of Chansey are over and done with, let's bring Whiskash back in and get into the real battle. The water ground type lives through an air slash and hits a crit stone edge to take Togekiss down into red health. For the third time in the battle, Cynthia breaks out a full restore to ruin all of our hard work. Karma helps us out though. We get off back to back stone edges to take Togekiss back into one shot range because air slash missed its mark. Aura Sphere finishes off Whiskash and we return her to her ball and send out Mime Jr. Mr. Rhyme the Third survives an air slash and retaliates with Thunderbolt to score a knockout and take Cynthia down to two. Garchomp is sent out next though and one brick break is enough to finish off Time Wizard's favourite nephew. We're down to the moment of truth. Our Poliwag is maxed out on speed and special attack and he needs to connect with Blizzard and one shot the quad weak dragon ground type, otherwise we're finished. Blizzard makes contact and Garchomp's health slowly trickles down until it reaches red and then it just stops. A Citrus Berry heals her back up a bit, and Brick Break one-shots Poliwag. Now we're stuck with just Krogunk. We get lucky with Garchomp missing Dragon Rush and confuse her with Swagger, but it's not enough. She breaks through confusion and lands an Earthquake that destroys Krogunk and hands Cynthia the win. I tried this battle a bunch of times and it was never short. This was the first time that Poliwag actually managed to connect with Blizzard, and the realisation that it wasn't enough to one-shot Garchomp told me all that I needed to know. There probably is a way to beat Cynthia with this team of six, maybe my IVs weren't good enough or maybe my strategy was flawed, but I couldn't do it with this particular team. Cynthia is really, really good. If she hadn't used all of the full restores then we might have had a chance, but she's happy with breaking the rules and we just have to live with it. Anyway, that's it, that is the video. No Hall of Fame this time. I hope you were able to enjoy in spite of our failure. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.